Alrighty, folks. Today, I have something that is really, really cool. So, if you go back, like, maybe two videos or three videos ago, I said that one of the things that I was missing on the Apple Vision Pro, which is why I could not really fully kind of just use it as my development environment without, like, other things like a Mac, is because of a lack of VS Code. Really, there aren't any like, programming environments available, kind of because of the fact that Apple's paradigm is that you don't really have access to the file system. Which, I mean, that's understandable, but obviously, you know, it'd be nice to have a way around that, and I have actually found that way. So recently, I was informed of this thing called Code Server, which allows you to run on any Unix-based machine, essentially what is a copy of VS Code that you can access from a web browser. And not just, you know, a web browser that's whatever, say, on the machine. A web browser on any machine. And so then I realized, you know, okay, wait a minute. If I can access VS Code on that machine, and that also has access to the file system and a terminal, all of a sudden, like, using the Apple Vision Pro by itself is a very viable strategy. So, that's actually like what I kind of just experimented with. I really kind of just want to show you the clips of me actually programming and closing an issue in my LLM project about this, because just because this is so amazing. And then I guess I'll show you guys kind of how I installed it, what some of the configuration, and a little bit of the quirks of Code Server. But otherwise, I mean, it's an amazing, amazing piece of software. I guess let's just get started. Alrighty, so if you look at my setup, you'll actually notice that I don't have a Mac anywhere in front of me. What I actually have is, uh, is I have three copies of Safari up here. And also, none of these is actually a remote desktop. You see on the left here, I actually have my GitHub with my issues open. On the right side, I have what I'm researching in case I need to research anything for my programming. And in the center, what I have here is what is actually a copy of VS Code in a browser. But the interesting part is that this is actually hosted on a separate dedicated machine, which happens to also be the machine that I'm doing my, my development on. And the really interesting thing is that actually, if I edit a file like this, or any of the files that you see here, the very interesting part is that it actually doesn't modify any, any files related to anything on my Apple Vision Pro. It's actually saving the file on the remote server where this copy of VS Code is hosted. Alright, so the issue that I'm actually working on in this clip here is I'm just trying to improve some of the logging because unfortunately I didn't really do a good job of that the first time around. And in one of actually the key sections that was really spamming my logs, which if you actually watch my previous video I kind of mentioned this, it turns out that I actually had a lot of debug lines kind of just scattered everywhere. and they weren't really particularly useful, at least in an everyday kind of scenario, so I just tried to make it so that the trace variable that I'd introduced would actually work. I will note that one weird little annoying thing is that the virtual keyboard seems to constantly come up, even though I have a hardware keyboard enabled, and I don't really know how to fix that right now. I'm sure Apple will fix that in a future software update though. I also wrote some logging for another one of the modules that I had, which actually didn't have any logging at all, and I actually don't remember why I didn't do that, but I figured that it would be important, especially considering the integrations that I would have to do with a front end for this middleware. And the last thing I did is I basically just wrote a commit and then double checked that it actually closed the relevant issues and whatnot. And it was actually really cool because when I looked at my GitHub tab immediately after I'd pushed the commit, it actually had already showed the issue that I had had open in Safari as completed, which was really cool. Alright, so I actually just have up here the GitHub page for Code Server. The link for this will be down in the description, and it'll also be in like one of those info cards. But essentially, in order to install it, it's actually really easy, because if you scroll down to the Getting Started area, they literally have a whole install script that already just like works. All you have to do is copy this 
command and then just paste it in your terminal on any Unix-based machine, and it just works. It knows what to do already, essentially just based on whatever operating system you're running, and it's really, really cool. So just watch this. All I had to do on this Ubuntu machine that I have is literally just paste that, press enter, type in my administrative password, and it's done. Which is the craziest part. Since I want to start code server now and restart on boot, all I do is copy this command that they give me and then paste it. And they've already just now basically pre-configured everything with systemctl. And if I want to change the config, all I have to do is just go into dot config slash code server slash config dot yaml. And literally the entire config is right here. And it's really simple. If I want to make it so that, for example, I can access this code server from outside of just the machine that's running it, all I have to do is this, and I'm just going to change the port to, for example, 4567. Then, once I save this, and if I go sudo systemctl restart code server, and I hit tab, it's already done. And now all I have to do is now go into my browser, for example, and hit the IP address of that machine, which is 192.168.10.254, and hit port 4567. Now you'll see here that it actually comes up with, you know, a password prompt, and in that exact same config file, if you were looking carefully before, you'll see that it gives me this password here. So if I copy this password and put it in, now voila! All of a sudden, you now magically have a version of VS Code. Technically, it's actually VS Codium, but still, it's VS Code in a browser. And obviously, because you know this is VS Codium, you have access to the marketplace with all of the different plugins and extensions and whatever you want. Obviously, no, this is not the Microsoft mar Marketplace, so some of the plugins will be missing. To kind of just demo this, all I did was I just opened the home directory of the administrator user, which you can also do, by the way, by just using this URL query parameter here to just go to any pad that you want. And then I just opened this file here, which is one of the files that I happen to have on this machine. And if I just make an edit like this, for example, really quick, now you'll notice that if I go into this file on the command line, that edit was made like literally instantaneously. It makes it so easy that, you know, I could even do it on the Apple Vision Pro. And since the Apple Vision Pro finally has the ability to autofill passwords from your Apple ID, like all of a sudden you could just save the password in, for example, your Mac Safari or however you're setting up this code server, and then you never have to worry about typing in that password again. It's really that simple. There are some weird little quirks about Code Surfer that I would like to mention. One of them being that extensions like the AWS Toolkit for Code Whisperer will not actually let you log in unless you have your connection to the Code Server be through HTTPS with an SSL certificate. You'll see this because actually in this tab where normally there would be a bunch of information from the AWS Toolkit and some buttons to, you know, allow you to redirect to AWS and give permission to Code Whisperer to access your VS Code. It's just completely blank instead. Another one of the things is that the Code Whisperer connection that you make on one Code Server client will actually not transfer to any others. And this actually kind of makes sense just because the login is probably saved in your cookies. And that obviously does not really transfer between different browsers or machines. This pretty much works like your normal VS Codium, because you've got all of the extensions that you want, you have pretty much the exact same kind of file management system, you can use like the new file, the new folder, and you can obviously upload files, it's really quite well developed, and I think that this will be a very powerful tool, no matter what your circumstance is. Alright. I hope that gives you kind of a good overview on Code Server and how you install it and what some of, you know, the little weird little quirks about it is. But I think that this honestly has the potential to be amazing. I probably won't be personally using this right now as unfortunately the precision with which I can do things is a little limited. Some of the keybinds are also a little bit funky, as pressing Command W, for example, it actually closes like the entire Safari window, even though I would actually like for it to basically just close whatever tab I've got open in VS Code. There may be settings for this, but it's 
It's a little hard to decipher, and I'm actually not even sure if it's possible at all, due to the fact that some keybinds will just always be registered by the operating system before the program inside the browser can even, like, understand what's happening. It's a really, really good thing, and I think that if you are kind of, you know, lacking in the Mac department, that's, it's still entirely viable to use an Apple Vision Pro as essentially your main programming, like, computer. Because this gives you access to now quite literally everything you need. You can have your programming environment, you can have your, your, your repository in Git or SVN or whatever you're using. And you can also have stuff that you can look up. You can mess with the settings of your computer. I mean, in my opinion, this basically has all of the core components that I would actually need in order to do something like this. Because now I no longer have to worry about the fact that I don't have access to the file system. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.